So I've got here materials for my DIY project for this week. This is my first DIY in like a while, but it's something to go with my most popular one, which was a DIY light up wand. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a DIY wand display. This is just a board of wood. It's about one foot by two feet and then about half an inch thick. Then I've also got the other essential, which is some cup hooks or other type of hooks that you can put on the board. Honestly, that's just the basis of this entire thing is a wood board with hooks on it. The ones I chose to use today are one and a quarter inch. I also got some seven eighths inch ones. I actually have those ones right here with me too. And these ones, the, they're just a bit smaller and I was seeing that when I was trying them on for size that they didn't fit perfectly with all of my wands. Some of my wands would have had to rest on top of them, which I just decided to go buy some new bigger hooks. Then of course you've also got to have some paint and some paint brushes to just make the board look the right color or whatever you want. And then I've also got a ruler and a pencil to mark where I want all my holes to go. And then I also have a paper, this one's a nice kind of old looking piece of paper that I'm going to make the writing on the top go on and then I'm going to Mod Podge it on. Oh, and then I almost forgot I was going to put it here. You need some sandpaper too just to make the board look nice and smooth before you paint it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started with this project. The first part is just sanding down the wood a little bit just to make it smoother. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it. I just picked out this grapevine colored paint and we'll see how it looks. Honestly, I haven't even seen what this color really looks like on it yet, but let's give it a shot. Oh, and before we really get into painting, I do have like this puzzle mat to lay down underneath it just to protect my nice coffee table. When I was younger, my mom would always lay down newspapers while we were painting and it, you know, protected the table and stuff, but now I don't have newspapers anymore, so I don't really know what to use. I, I mean, I could use like cheap tablecloths, but I don't have any of those, so I'm just gonna use this puzzle mat that I don't really care about. this painted just the top and the sides you don't necessarily have to paint the back unless you want to since it's gonna be hanging on a wall but if you're gonna put it up on like an easel or something you'll want to paint the back just so it matches the whole thing but anyway I've got it painted I think I might do one more coat but I'm gonna take a look at what it looks like when it is dry and while it dries I'm gonna go ahead and go to class because it is just about time I will see you back in a second okay I'm back it is now dried and I think I'm gonna apply a second coat just to make mostly the edges look better. They kind of got some paint gloop on them, so I want to kind of just go over it and clean it off a little bit. Okay, I've got the second coat painted. Now I just have to wait for this one to dry and then I can continue on with the rest of the project. Okay, now that the second coat has all dried, it's time to mark for where the hooks are gonna go in and get those in. What I've discovered with this size of wood that is about 
one foot wide. If you have the hooks in about two inches from the edges, the hooks will be a nice width apart for pretty much any size wands. For instance, these are two of my Ollivander Originals. This one is the shortest wand I have, and I believe the shortest one they sell, at least when it comes to Universal Studios and official Harry Potter wands. And this is pretty much the longest one I've had, and I looked at it and it looks like at those distances it would work for both of these wand sizes. Then where to place them up and down with this piece of wood that is two feet long. If you start at the bottom and go up one inch and put the bottom hooks there and then have the hooks every two inches and do ten rows of hooks then it'll turn out pretty nicely and you'll still have a chunk at the top to put some words or something and that will be the last part. I did this before I painted it but then I painted it so you couldn't really see this stuff before so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my paper to mark where the two inch line is so then I only have to mark in the spots where I'm drilling so it's not gonna mess up my nice paint job. dots are. So let me get out my drill. This is definitely recommended when putting these in. They'd be really hard to get in if you didn't do this first. Okay, now that we've got a board with some nice holes in it, we want to put the hooks on. So you can do this by hand just twisting it in, although it does get kind of tight at the end. Um, when it gets to that point, if you do want it to go tighter, you can also use a screwdriver. The only thing is sometimes it comes off with this type of hooks. If you're using more ceiling hooks instead of cup hooks, then it doesn't catch as much, but I think this is good enough for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and screw all these in. But yeah, if you do tilt it kind of at an angle so it's higher on the short end, then it stays on just fine. Just don't push too hard when you're turning, especially at the, the end, because I accidentally bent this one just a tiny bit. It kind of tilts out because I screwed it in too far. So my camera totally died while I was screwing in those last few things, but it's okay, I got it charged now. And also while I was charging, I did one of the steps I hadn't talked about yet. I printed out the Ollivanders logo on to this nice old looking paper, and then I am going to cut it out to be the right size for the top right there. It's funny, I feel like I keep on pulling up supplies from down there that I didn't have at the very beginning. I kind of just listed the basics and have grabbed a bunch of other things during this video. Before that, real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off all the sawdust from screwing in the, um, the hooks. I just also want to double check that all of these are pointing up. They look pretty good. Some of them got a little bent or crooked, but it's okay. I think it'll do just as is. Now here I want to make sure that this is pretty straight, just to make sure it's looking good. Now with this logo, I just went online and found a copy of it and printed it out. Nothing super special here. I was actually thinking of using the bag that I got my wand in when I went to Universal Studios, but that's black and silver, which would look good, just not with the brown, you know? Okay, and let's check the sizing on that. And my camera died again. Lol. Hopefully I'll be able to actually finish this time. Anyway, so I just cut the Ollivander 
um, sign for the top and so it's looking good so I'm just gonna go ahead and Mod Podge that on. Hopefully this Mod Podge works just fine because I found it in my old bedroom. <laughs> it had never been opened or used or anything um, but it is probably fairly old. worked with Mod Podge in a long time. It was like, I used it all the time when I'd go to like camps and do crafts and stuff. Wow, that was actually a lot of excess right there. The nice thing about Mod Podge is you can just put it over top too and it'll give it a nice little finish and it'll protect the paper. Okay, so I let the Mod Podge dry overnight. So this is nice and smooth. I actually, I did use a card to get off the excess so it would have a smoother feel. You can just have it have the brush strokes over it. That also looks pretty nice too, but I just wanted the smoother feel to make it more legible. But anyway, I can hold it up so you can kind of see what it looks like. I think it turned out pretty good. I like the Ollivander sign at the top. And let's check that the wands will fit in just fine. I have my collection of wands down here. There's most of them. And this one. Now I actually need a lot more wands to finish making this collection. But see, here's my shortest one. Some wands only have like some small spots where it fits in. But yeah, you can just stick each of them in. I like the one and one fourth size of hooks much better. I was trying to test it out and the seven eighths of an inch ones, they just weren't big enough for some of them, particularly this one it was having struggles with and the Tina one it would have had to go all the way over not on the handle, you know? And then we've got a nice little wand stand and let's maybe take a look at how it looks on the wall. Boom, and now that'll be a forever part of my YouTube set. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about how to make your own DIY wand display. If you did like this video, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe, which you can do by clicking over here. Also check out some of my other videos. My DIY light up wand video is up top. And then down below is my playlist of the eight videos I have posted this week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!